2002, four of us were selected on my advice to assess. Nigeria was playing a match and at halftime, the four of us took note of the lapses and I was assigned as the acting head of technical department to go into the dressing room and inform the coaches. So I went in there. Then it was Amadou, late Amadou, assisted by late Keshi. I walked quietly into the dressing room and handed the piece of paper over to late Keshi. Keshi read through and tore the paper into pieces, threw them into a waste paper basket. When you talk about the history of Nigerian football, one name that comes to mind is Chief Festus Adigboye Onigbindi. Born on March 5, 1938, he grew up to become Nigeria's first coach, Nigeria's first local coach, to take the team to AFCON 1984 to pick up a silverware. They won a silver medal at that tournament. Fast track to 2002, he became Nigeria's first ever coach to take the team to a World Cup, although they did not go as far as the first round. But history will forever remember his name. That is why on Legit.ngtv today, we have come all the way to Ibado to talk to Chief Onig Bindi to find out what is the secret of his longevity. My name is Nomso Obiajuru. Welcome to Legit.ng. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Chief Adebo Onig Bindi is the name. I was born some years ago, 1938 to be precise. March 5 in Modakeke, in Oshun State of Nigeria. In 1982, Nigeria went for a competition in Libya and the team did not do well. And it resulted in a big row between the players and the officials. So as a result, the prominent players in the national team, the then uh, Green Eagles, retired. They, they, they retired themselves. They said they were no longer interested. And uh, so there was a complete vacuum the national team. It was then the National Sports Commission acting on the instruction of the federal government decided to open that job to any Nigerian who might qualify. The advertisement was on. I applied for the position of manager or chief coach to the uh, what we used to call Green Eagles then, the national football team. Seven of us attended the interview and eventually emerged the winner. And that was what gave me the opportunity of uh, handling the national team for the first time from 1983 to 1985. In 2000 and uh, there was the African Cup of Nations in Mali. I went as the acting head of NFA technical department, acting head, because they, they made an advertisement. I applied. The interview was conducted. I imagine that was towards the end of 2001. They eventually gave me a letter of appointment dated, I think, 8th of January 2002. But it was a tentative appointment, tentative in the sense that they wrote in the letter that we will discuss the details later. In spite of that, I reported in Abuja and I was already acting as the head of technical department. So when the team was going to Mali, on my recommendation, there were four of us leading coaches selected to monitor the performances of the team in Mali. Ala BSN was there, uh, Crystal Davis, and I think lead Paul Hamilton and myself. Nigeria was playing a match and at halftime, the four of us took note of the lapses and I was assigned as the acting head of technical department to go into the dressing room and inform the coaches. So I went in there. Then it was Amadou, late Amadou, assisted by late Keshi. I walked quietly into the dressing room and handed the piece of paper over to late Keshi. Keshi read through and tore the paper into pieces, threw them into the waste paper basket. 
and I went out quietly as I, as, as I came. But the following morning, I decided that my job was finished on that uh, assignment. So I left Mali for UK to have a rest. It was while I was there, I got to know that the team eventually lost and the team was disbanded with the coaches. Now they now called me from UK because when we were discussing my assignment, the content of my assignment as head of technical department, I told them that any time there was a breakdown in the technical staff or technical setup of any national team, the technical department would take over in the interim. So it was on the basis of that that I was, as the uh, acting head of the technical department, I was asked to come back and take over the team. And that was in June. Uh, the, the computer was going to be in June. I was called back in March, barely three months, to prepare a team for the World Cup. But I had no option. I came back and uh, that started the problem. All the players who were sent out of the team in Mali now had meetings and said none of them should report into the national team again. Again, it became another vacuum for me. You remember the, the vacuum of 1983? The same thing is now was now repeating itself. They said they would not report because they were angry. So I started picking players from all over the place again. And barely three months to prepare a team for the World Cup finals. But we did our best. When the players, the old players who said they would not report, started noticing that the team was picking up, they now started, you know, making contact. They wanted to come back. And that was um, one mistake I made. I seated and took some of them back. And uh, that was one of the things that affected our results in uh, Japan. With gratitude to the Almighty, I don't usually regret anything because of my belief in God. I believe that there is only one power. My belief in God is so strong, I don't even believe Satan exists. So whatever happens to me, happens because God wants it to happen that way. And the next thing I do is to adjust to, to it. I cannot compete against God. I cannot wrestle for wisdom or power with God. So whatever happens in my life happens because that is the way God wants it. So I hardly have uh, regrets. But on question of achievement, I think I should leave that to people. Uh, you can imagine how many firsts you have recorded for me now. First Nigerian to handle the national team. First Nigerian to take Nigerian to African Cup. First Nigerian to take Nigeria to the World Cup. First Nigeria on CAF Technical Committee on FIFA Technical Committee, etc. Based on my personality, because some people don't feel comfortable having me around. Because they believe, and I can't see myself changing. And I have everything to thank God for. I am 81 years old. Don't have, have something to thank God for. And that is because, because people keep asking me, at 81, you are still strong, what is, what is the secret? I say, the secret is that I don't have any dirty thing in my mind. My mind is always clear, no tension. Of recent, I went to my doctor, they checked my BP, it was uh, 13080, which was good enough for my age. There's no tension. I'm not going to tell you a lie. So if you come to me several times, I, I don't need to stammer. The truth is the truth. If you like it, fine. If you don't like it, it's just too bad. I can't help you. And I don't have one single enemy in my life. If I give you a piece of advice, 
you reject it, it doesn't make us enemies. We are free to accept what we, what we want and reject what we don't want. So that calmness. So, and you remember, when I came back from the World Cup in 2002, I went to Ladipo Market to buy some spare parts. And as soon as I alighted from my car, I saw a pack of about 50 young boys surrounding me. And they were all holding their chains, imitating me. That, that was how, what I would do on the, on the bench, that I would not stand up, jump up and down. Why do I have to? So we all burst into laughter because we knew what they meant. That is my life. But let me quickly correct this. From my experience as a coach, the match time is not the coaching time. If you have done your job well before the match, all you have to do is just to send signals, reminders. When I see coaches, even when I analyze for FIFA, and I see a coach doing, I write in my report, in my report oh, this coach has not done his job at the right time. The match time is not the coaching time. We were friends until the two of them died. Okay. So we were friends. We were so still they, discussing. They came back to apologize concerning that. They don't need to apologize. Apologize for what? They have not offended me. That's why I say I don't have an enemy. Well, the first thing is that I am not close to the situation. And I don't talk on things I don't understand. I don't know what happened, what led to it. Up to now, I don't know. And he himself has not come out to explain to us that this was what happened. All I read was that he had appealed or something like that. So I'm not in a position, but if it happened, it, it was unfortunate. I don't know what status is in now. I knew that at one time he became about number four, number five go best goalkeeper in the world. That was some years ago. I don't know what state his, his, his fitness in is in now. So, and that will depend on whoever is handling the national team. Coaches are like wine. The older, the better. So like for a coach, for a coach that has intelligence, right now, even from this discussion we are having, I am learning. An intelligent human being should see himself as a walking question mark, always wanting to know. But that's one problem with Nigeria. A lot of people believe they have arrived. They have nothing more to learn from anybody. And unfortunately, the. The, 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 the situation on the ground does not even present to them what to learn from. So, who do you blame? Back to your question. I am not a job seeker at 81. In fact, of recent I told some media people that they should stop asking me about Nigerian football. That I, play, I paid my dues, that was how I put it. But if the challenge comes from any angle, will you do this for us? If it is convenient for me, I will do it. If it is convenient for me. I'm saying we will spell out the details. What will be my function? You won't, I will not accept the function of a chief coach with any team. If I am the manager, I am the manager. Lead level 10 about 10,000 per annum, 10,000 naira per annum. We have a pack of players, we don't have a team. That's my conclusion. <laughs>